Hi, and welcome to another episode of our podcast where language enthusiasts talk about learning and stuff. It's three of us here. I'm Zoya. I'm Taya. And I'm Ksusha. In this chaotic world, we're all in need of safe space to speak one's mind, love, and enjoy life. Because that's the only way to stay safe while zooming through chaos. Okay, we are on. Let's go. So today, what we are talking about, girls? We are talking about fluency. Yeah. Yes, and what exactly does fluency mean? Because lots of lots of students are saying that I want to be fluent in language, and I think we need to clear up what it means. But like, disclaimer, what it means for us, we don't have a dictionary entry for it. So what does it mean for us? Because again, the idea of our students in most cases, like if they are elementary, they're like, no, I'm not fluent. I'll be fluent when I'm at intermediate. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, fortunately, it doesn't work like this. Yes. And by fluent here, we mean not the high level language fluency, but just the ability to deliver your idea in a foreign language, just to speak. And they're reluctant to speak mm-hmm. on the elementary, on the beginner level, on mm-hmm. the pre-intermediate level. They just don't want to speak their mind. And that's pretty sad. It is sad. I believe that it's pretty sad because at least in the heads of my students, or maybe it's connected to nationalities or post-Soviet territories. I believe that in the heads of my students, in their mind, they just say that, okay, I need to die inside some books, get grammar out of there. And then after a couple of years, maybe five years, Mm -hmm. I will Mm -hmm. start speaking. Maybe when I get to the intermediate level, but not earlier, please, because I'm Mm -hmm. too afraid. And Mm -hmm. if it's elementary, then it doesn't mean that I am ready to speak. I need to be silent and keep silence. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Or maybe I have no words. I don't know any words in English and I keep forgetting this vocabulary every time. And I don't want to speak because I can't speak the way I want to. Mm -hmm. oh the way i want this is a good point because Mm -hmm. usually they have like this ideal person i know in their minds maybe it's actually somebody famous they heard or maybe it's even their teacher and they're like oh no i want to speak like this and it's a good thing to have some kind of i don't know what is it reference kind of yeah like something i would like to be but again, everybody's different, everybody's unique, so you can like aspire to be or speak like somebody else, but you're still going to speak like yourself, and you also need to make your peace with it. You can do whatever you can to reach this goal, but at the end of the day, like don't try to be like somebody else. Be yourself, and you're going to make mistakes. Because uh, learning language is not only about books. It's not only about having this, having that. It's about psychology so much. Not (laughs) degrading the professional people, (laughs) but I still believe that it's really, really deeply connected with our self-esteem, with our self-image. and Emotions, of course. Yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. And when people understand that they can speak the language, and that's for me, that will be the key point of the fluency for me fluency is just when you are able to speak your mind when you're able to deliver mm-hmm. your thoughts mm-hmm. so when people understand that they are able to do that their self-esteem skyrockets and they feel just magically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the other way around <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately it starts with this the other way around and then are there any examples i have a story I'm not going to tell the whole story. It's like too long. But anyways, the point is like, I like to support (laughs) Ksusha's view here that when people start speaking their mind and especially when people start making jokes in another language. Oh, that's gold. It's like, it's not even you're halfway there, but you're like, you're there. And if you can be sarcastic or ironic or even like make a real joke in a language you're studying. Even at the level of the elementary. Exactly. Like if you, even if you're trying to translate a Russian joke into English and I had, I've had so many of them over my career. It's like, <laughs> pump face, like, 
guys do not do it it's like it doesn't translate but i appreciate the trying the process of them and it works i actually remember all the videos and all the shorts or tiktoks or whatever it is where people are saying that i cannot joke in the foreign language and people will never know that i'm actually a funny person yeah yeah <laughs> so we can actually destigmatize it and say that you can be funny in your foreign language you can be funny in your second whatever language yeah i actually think that i'm funnier in the foreign language than i'm in, in my native one because i make more jokes and i'm like joking at myself <laughs> well if you do it with yourself we will never know so <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not like on my own or something no i'm just making a joke at my expense <laughs> ah <laughs> I see. It might be true. Actually, we, guys, we, we do talk to each other in all the all kinds of languages. So we need to start noticing this stuff. But it might be true. I'm taking the notepad with me next time. <laughs> I feel more free, I guess, in English. Yeah. In English as I am in Russians. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like this is my self-confidence. Morning self-confidence, starting to wake up. I might be a bit more sarcastic. You're pretty sarcastic in your native one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I also, sorry, I would like to make a note here. I believe I'm witty, not sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good for you, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it took me some years to get here. So, yeah. Uh, is it important for you to joke in the language? Is it the marker of fluency for you? Well, no, it's not, actually. If we're talking about German humor, sorry, <laughs> I'm always putting German everywhere. <laughs> it's your heritage, you can't help it. Soon we're gonna find out how German you are. Well, it's like 90% German. It makes sense. <laughs> so I'm putting German here a little bit. It's just the German humor is such a weird thing. And Zoya just like you are. nods <laughs> with her head. Yes, it's really weird. So I don't like to say to my students, well, let's joke, let's joke. <laughs> Homework, right? Two jokes. <laughs> Are you preparing the stand-up comedians? <laughs> Is it like your side hustle gig? Workshop. <laughs> yes. Like you thought that the marvelous Mrs. Maisel was just an idea. No, it is based on my reality. Yes, are there any stand-up comics from Germany that are popular around the world? No. I don't know any. Me neither. No, no, nothing pops into my mind. So I do know some comics in Germany. They speak German, but well, they joke in German. Mm -hmm. And those jokes understand only Germans. <laughs> only Germans understand those jokes. <laughs> it's also very German, to be honest. They're very solid community. So with German, to be fluent doesn't mean you joke and you're fluent. I have an idea. Uh, if you can write a, what is it, complaint letter or something like this? <laughs> yeah, this is a level of fluency. Level of complaint. That will be it. Yep. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I also, can I say something? I started talking about like German and stuff. And I just wanted to mention that I think out of three of us, Tai has the weirdest sense of humor. Like I've known Tai for how long is it? Like three years now? It's three years. It's going to be three years in May, actually. I still don't get everything and at first i thought it was something wrong with me but then i just <laughs> <laughs> i i think it's nothing wrong with ty <laughs> no 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 i think it's just now i think we're both are clinical <laughs> no but guys i think you also do not get everything i joke about yeah. so it's fair right i uh, have too many friends references you know or other tv series references and ty is just weird like i think it's, it's <laughs> in a good way in, in a, a good, good way. way no i'm not <laughs> weird is good guys i'm phoebe from friends weird is good it's my jam oh yes you're a phoebe i am a phoebe <laughs> yeah, yeah. ty used to be phoebe and now ty is monik so <laughs> ty is shifting <laughs> she is in the process of becoming another <laughs> character from friends. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But I, I still feel like Monica. So Good for you. So I think it's like Thai's sense of humor is a mix of German, <laughs> Russian, of course, and Japanese. Because Japanese, for me, Japanese... It's like, they are really weird. Are the weirdest. Ooh. We need another word for weird. Like, strange. <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> 
oh, they are bizarre. <laughs> they are bizarre. Yes, actually, that's true. That they have very, very specific mindset. Advertisements. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> Don't get me started on these ones. <laughs> yeah. What have to go f- through somebody's head or mind to make such things? I will never understand. I think if you are if you're trapped on islands for so long, <laughs> <laughs> all your life. You get some different personalities inside of you, like psychophrenics, you know, psychophrenics. Yes. Okay, disclaimer. Psychophrenia is a real disease and we are not making jokes at this expense. We are just making jokes at our expense. And we're not making jokes about Japanese people as well. Yes, yes, sure. They're fine, just bizarre. Which is something that makes them who they are. Exactly. Yes. People around the world think that Russians are weird as well. Like, you know, all this actually comedians making fun of us for our accent or maybe accents who knows no our ability to consume alcohol (laughs) you know what about alcohol finnish people drink more yeah it's a fact i checked it but it's just like stereotypes it's something that is so deep that Mm -hmm. you will never conquer it i actually don't want to i'm okay like make fun of our accents or whatever it's fine I'm fine. How come we dwell on stereotypes, not <laughs> in jokes? We were speaking about C. It's okay. So as far as I got for now, one key marker of fluency for me and for Zoya together, it will be to joke in the language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I disagreed. Yes, you disagreed. <laughs> and I believe that I need to clear up that joking in the language, it's not supposed to happen only on the high levels. You can oh, joke wow. also on elementary level. It may seem a bit awkward or confusing, but it's okay. It's your personality. No? Exactly. Shining through <laughs> all the layers. I also wanted to say, like, if you're an elementary student, you're like, you can start with translating jokes from Russian to any other language to the one you're studying and it might help. I've had some students for several years and I noticed like at the beginning everybody's very shy and they like no and then somewhere again I'm not gonna mention levels but after some time I started noticing their personalities coming through and I was actually quite shocked with my one of my students because I didn't see him as a sarcastic dude at first, but then as he like gained more confidence, I guess, and okay, he became a bit more fluent. He became very sarcastic, started <laughs> making some jokes, and I was like, what? Didn't see it coming. So mm-hmm. yeah, it might be a surprise for teachers. I also was thinking about not only the jokes, but I remember that one of my students, he came to me around half a year ago. And at the very beginning, at the very first lesson, I told him that he's going to speak from the very first lesson. And it may be awkward uh, for some time, but it's okay. It's just the learning process. And he was so nervous. He said to me that he wants to speak his mind. He wants to say the exact thought that is on his mind. And he can't because he doesn't have enough vocabulary for that. And I was trying to explain to him, and I think I succeeded that it's okay to use some synonyms and it's okay to say not all the Mm -hmm. shades of the meaning but just the main idea for now to start from there and then as you progress you add some shades you add some special effects we'll call it this way and he eased up and he relaxed a bit and he started to deliver just the main idea and after that after some time he started to add the words that's what we have been studying and then it all worked out so Mm -hmm. i want to say to all the people who um, are afraid to not to deliver their thoughts exactly it's okay you can just add some more details later or maybe the person will ask if he got it right and it's okay because the communication is the key we need the language to communicate exactly yes that's the hardest thing for me as a teacher i've got some of the students reluctant to speak but i'm trying to encourage them to speak on the level they they already mm, obtained i mean uh, they have already got for example he or she says well i can't put it well, put it in a different way. Say it easier rather than translating it exactly from your mother tongue, the exact phrase into the 
foreign language phrase. Mm -hmm. That's that's not possible even sometimes. Mm -hmm. Direct translation is a whole other story. Oh my, oh my. I actually wanted to add to both your points that I know that I mentioned like translating jokes from Russian to your language you're studying or from your mother tongue to a language you're studying. It's just an example. I'm actually quite against a drama translation approach as a whole, as I'm a victim of it. Back you up here. It's not that I do not use Russian at all in my classes. It happens, especially at elementary or pre-intermediate. Although it also depends on the person. For some people, it's really difficult to speak only foreign language in classes at the beginning. So like I see them struggle and I like say something in Russian and they relax and I can say it and so like okay but then at like starting from intermediate it's pretty much all English sometimes I can translate some interesting phrases like oh you know and it sounds like this in Russian and like oh cool and it helps them remember it because they have this kind of association now so where was I going with this? Sorry. About <laughs> what's translating. Oh, it's translating. Sorry. Yes, of course. And then they're like, I want to speak. I have the same. Like they tell me, my students tell me, like, I want to speak English the way I speak Russian. And I'm like, it's not going to be like this. Like you need to, first of all, make your peace with that, that you're not going to have so complex structures in English or in Okay, I'm speaking At only... At least you won't English. have it from the very beginning. Yes, but then again, mm, it's very rare. Like, I watch a lot of interviews with native speakers, let's say Americans or British people. Yes, yeah, some of them have these complex structures and, like, one sentence starts and it ends in, like, five minutes. I don't know, it takes them five minutes to <laughs> finish one sentence. Yes, but it's very rare to have it. And I'm not sure it's a must. So if you can communicate your idea to another person, it doesn't matter how complex your structures are. So I agree with both of you. And we need to get it to people that it's okay. The way you speak foreign language, it's not going to be the same. You speak your mother tongue. And it's okay. That's normal. And it's fine. Yes. I love it when it's like, I actually, guys, this is a question for you. Do you have it that... I can't even tell if I'm translating from Russian in my head or it's like a mix of Russian and English or it's just English when I speak English. For me, I've discussed it with one of my students because mm -hmm. she said that at some point she understood that she is translating and at some point she understood mm -hmm. that she is not. And we discussed it and I got some reflection and I understood that I just speak my mind. There is no filter. I mm -hmm. just say what mm -hmm. uh, conjures up in my mind. I don't even put it into sentences and before I speak that's why maybe I speak so fast most of the times um, because I have no filter I just think I have the thought and I deliver it immediately I don't register it to the language I just kind of have the switch in my head and I switch into one language and then I go with it and then I have the problem with the speech <laughs> from Spanish <laughs> because once I hear one Spanish word I have the switch to it on Spanish and I can't turn it back into English or Russian but that's other story same for me but I noticed that well as some students struggle and I have to like speak maybe a bit more slowly in English with them so and I try I can hear myself start like translating something from Russian, like how can I like make it easier for them? And like, oh, this is a no for me because it uh, slows down my speech. Like even now, like there are no Russian thoughts, English, English only. But again, it took me a long time to come here because I remember people like, oh, just think in English. I'm like, what the fuck? How is it possible? Like, <laughs> I was a student at that time. I was like, it's not possible. But then it kind of just happened i guess you just acquainted some level when you are comfortable enough first of all that's actually interesting so if you are trying to slow down your speech kind of translation happened yep yep that's interesting Ty, is the same for you no i don't know <laughs> first of all Ty, what about german like we're talking about english 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 what about german because this is your main foreign language yeah i think if I start like speaking slowly, it's just for the student so he or she can understand me better. And I don't translate anything at this level. I'm still translating something into English because it's my second 
foreign language, it's totally normal again. <laughs> sure, normalizing it. I uh, still make mistakes and whatsoever, but in German, I don't slow down the speech. I'm just like, <laughs> I do not slow down in German. Yes. It should be our merch. Yeah, somewhere it... I do not slow down in German. I'm trying to slow down in Spanish because Spanish is like really fast yeah, uh, yeah. as it is. Yeah. Plus, the higher people get the level, the faster they start to speak, and sometimes it's impossible. So I try to slow it down for sure. And sometimes it's actually more difficult to talk when I'm trying to slow down. Exactly. And... This is what I mentioned about English. I'm trying to slow down for my students' benefit, and then I'm like struggling myself because when i speak fast i do not think about like words i need to choose and that just happens i make mistakes it's fine but when i slow down I'm like okay well you slow down you like you're not allowed to make mistakes now like because you're slowing down and it's like becomes this whole mess in my head so i prefer to just like say something and then explain it later yeah like blur it out with the mistakes and don't worry about that Exactly, yes. And then my students like blank expressions on their faces like, what? I do slow me down sometimes in German when I start speaking, <laughs> when I start speaking and then the the sentence becomes too too elaborate. Exactly. This is it. And you put something at the end like the verb, the main <laughs> thing in German sentence and you sometimes <laughs> have to put it in the end and you forget what you were supposed to use here. <laughs> How to speak German, put the verb at the end, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, we have one advice from today's recording. One it piece was... of advice, yes, how to speak German. <laughs> well, first of all, study it with tire, and then... <laughs> For that, you can put the verb in the end. <laughs> she will but... teach you how to do it. It's not that easy. <laughs> okay. It's not any verb. Okay, Sometimes the there are two. Okay, yeah. then that complicates things, then that you really need to sign up for some lessons. Yeah, like, I remember there is, like, kind of can i say it in german we have some kind of like present perfect mm -hmm. it's called perfect if i'm mm -hmm. not mistaken and there are two verbs right like in present perfect so auxiliary and the main one mm -hmm. and i remember like being confused like and which one do i put at the end now there are two <laughs> two of them what's the answer for the person who is like as far from German as it can I will just guess you need to put both of the verbs there no but again the order okay both of them are at the end but still it's like have done and where okay have done or done have <laughs> done have of course yeah yeah if you are asking this question so it means that it's not that obvious so it should be done have i think <laughs> so another lesson we learned from this recording it's german is not that obvious <laughs> yes but still logical very well for germans it is <laughs> yeah and we remember that they are very reserved people <laughs> as british are actually mm -hmm. do you see the tendency I guess Spanish aren't. Oh, no. Oh, no. no way. They're like the opposite of it. This is why I'm struggling. I'm very attached to being reserved. I guess actually English has something to do with it. So like I'm very attached to it and German helped me. And then like I went to, I know, French or Spanish. And then, oh, no, okay, French is a kind of there as well. But Spanish is totally different. Not reserved. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. No, like touching and all the gestures and like, and I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> it's actually also part of the fluency for these languages. For Italian and for Spanish, I believe it's part of the fluency because I have seen, I think, hundreds of videos of Italians trying to speak without gesturing <laughs> and torture for them. Poor thing. <laughs> yeah, and it really is part of the fluency for them. It comes so naturally, yes. And I think you actually, you start acquiring this gesture things as you learn a language. Yes, if you are learning, it's not only through the books, but actually by speaking and by watching some films or mm -hmm. whatever content. And you see people do that. Yes, sure. You shadow it, you mimic it somehow. Mm -hmm. If you're learning it just through the books, it's not going to happen. So please, people, one more advice. It's not a good idea to learn the language only through the books. 
please. But this is our other episode. Yes, yeah. which, just remember it for now. <laughs> Keep it in mind. Yeah, yes. we'll discuss it later. <laughs> what about Russian? Oh, meet a person who is not a Russian native speaker. How can you say he's fluent? <laughs> I believe that it will be swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, we meet a Russian who is not a native speaker? What? No, no, no. Somebody who is speaking Russian, but he is not a native speaker. Oh, they can't swear in Russian, yes. They can't swear in Russian. Because the point is that, for example, in English, again, sorry, they have one word. I will not say it, I guess. You have already said it in this recording. I'm sorry. So it's the F word. No. <laughs> F, no. <laughs> so the F word. And they have it for everything. And they like conjure it. Or what's the word? I hate this word. So like they make it a verb and then they make it past sent and tense with it. And then it's an adjective somehow. Then it's a noun. And when they... It's very versatile. Very. Which is comes in handy. And it makes sense in English. And it actually can be like as an insult, but also a compliment. The F word? Yes. When when it's, for mm-hmm. example... Ah, uh, yes. Yep. You're like, uh-huh. Amazing. Sure. Why mm-hmm. not? But in Russian, we have different words for different situations, for insults, for compliments as well, actually. Expressing emotions. Yeah. And it... Positive, negative. But it's also... It's very difficult for Russians, like, sometimes when my students, like, ask me, like, and how do I, like, say it just for fun, you know, in English, like, you swear words, I'm like, F word, and they're like, for this, F word, and they're like, everywhere? I'm like, yes. (laughs) So, yeah. You see, English is that easy, just one word for everything. We need to destigmatize the fact that English is difficult. It's not, guys. I don't remember if we mentioned it in our previous episodes. We can mention it in every episode, I believe. Oh, true. Okay, English is easy. You go and try learn another foreign language, especially Korean or Japanese. Try Japanese. Japanese, (laughs) yeah. You're going to come back crying. Yes. Oh, yes. And Taya is speaking from her personal experience because she's learning (laughs) Japanese. So believe that. I counted those tears. <laughs> and actually speaking of fluency, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it takes longer to become kind of fluent in Japanese yes. than it takes in English, right? Yes, yes. It's it's just another world, actually, because they have also those levels, but they somehow attach to those European levels, but they're totally different. <laughs> and you uh, need more time to obtain one level more time and more um, skills Mm -hmm. and you have to learn vocabulary you have to learn hieroglyphs that's the whole other story so you don't have to learn hieroglyphs in english and as far as i remember there are like two alphabets right two alphabets and hieroglyphs Mm -hmm. so (laughs) nice so are you still complaining about english guys don't try some japanese or chinese God. Or Korean, Vietnamese, like all of it. Yeah, but when we were talking about fluency and stuff, I just want to mention, and I think it's very important to say it, through my students or through people that I talk to, they have this dream of like, I will learn language and I will get the fluency. I want to point out that there is no point when you actually learn the language, when you achieve this mythical place in the universe, when you are a god of it and you don't need to learn it anymore (laughs) well okay i'm joking i'm just saying that you will never learn it until the end because it's a life organism can i can i put it this way Uh and it develops let's say this way being fluent it doesn't mean knowing everything about the language and knowing all the rules and knowing all the vocabulary because i've been studying learning whatever you call it like I've been in a relationship with English for a long time and I still learn some words, some new words almost daily and it's fine. And you still consider yourself as being fluent? I am fluent. Sure, sure. Well, actually, I wanted also to say that fluency doesn't even mean you speak the language. Wait, what, what are you talking about? You write in the language. You write emails. Uh, Fluency in writing is also important. Wait a second. Wait a second. I would not agree, I think, here. No, I think speaking is a crucial part of being fluent. Writing is not for some reason. And you guys are going to like say that writing is shit here. But if you can communicate your idea, but then you can't write an email, you're still fluent. But if you can write an email, but you can't 
speak it. No, I do not consider it. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, we need an int- dictionary entry here. But no, if you can only write, and I had so many students at the beginning who were like, yeah, yeah, I can like write something. I'm like, can you speak it? What? Well, like, can you explain what you've written? No. What about chatting now? You mean online? It's- yeah, we are chatting like every day. And it's like we're talking, but we're writing all over. It's short sentences. Like, how are you? Like with H, R, U? I know, but still. You're communicating, you're acting, you're reacting, you're joking. Okay, guys, we need third party here. Please (laughs) tell if you agree that writing will be fluency or it only should be at least the mix of all the skills and writing and speaking and listening. For me, uh, it's just my personal view on that. The language is for communication and you need to speak it. And right now we have all the... Chat GPT things. Oh my, and do not forget about autocorrection. I think it might be the case that you have to be as fluent in writing as you are speaking, but at the end of the day, if you just type it, and like sometimes writing, like you can cheat for sure, because you can look up something in the dictionary, look up something everywhere, and it's kind of cheating, but then when you speak, you can't do it, basically. You're talking to a person, you're like, oh, sorry. Well, you can, it's not forbidden, but you will not do it because speaking is such a process where you just, it's like a flow, you know? I'm still at my point of view. Sorry, guys. Well, it's fine. It's okay. Let's agree to disagree. Totally yes. fine. I think we need to wrap it up. Yep. So let's say, what does fluency mean? So many different things. <laughs> we just found out. So basically, it's the ability to communicate your idea. Yes. And to have the conversation, uh, to be able to speak your mind. And understand others. This Actually, we didn't mention it, sorry, but listening is also important because it's not only you speaking and constructing this complex sentences in your mind, but also being able to understand what another person is talking about. In order to react adequately. <laughs> yes, reaction and being an active listener, not just like listen and go with your idea, but mm-hmm. actually react to something like this. Have some hygiene here. <laughs> this is important. Yeah. And the last question. At what level will I be able to speak? At any level. If you can construct, I know, five words into one sentence, good for mm-hmm. you. Go on. It's just different stuff you can do at different levels, but you're still being fluent. So if you can communicate your ideas elementary, like you can ask somebody how to get to the bank, to the nearest bank. Or even you can answer the question, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you, (laughs) it's already fluent. Come on, you ask back. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of a joke, but yeah. Yeah, so basically you can speak at any level and you should speak at any level. It just will be different how much Mm -hmm. you can speak and how many shades, how many structures you can use there and Mm -hmm. how beautifully it will be put. That's the difference. So guys, thank you. Thank you for listening. (laughs) As always, you can write your stories or your questions to our email. You can join our Telegram channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our show on podcast and see you around. See you guys. Bye.